it doesn't matter if you're on a reservation or if you're not on a reservation, alcoholism is still an issue. Right, to this day. To this day, but if you take a look at the conditions that these groups of people live in, the disparity, the poverty, and things like that, those kinds of issues will breed these problems. Right. They have nothing. Like I said, most of these reservations are like third world conditions. There's no place to work. There's no money. There's nothing going on. And so or, it's, it's a breeding ground for that and meth and all of those kinds of problems. You know, they, things happen. The other thing that's happening way, all, way too often right now is the suicide rates are through the roof. Really? Amongst uh, young amongst the youth American or? Indians. Yeah. The suicide rates were horrible. Alcoholism was horrible. And it had nothing to do with <coughs> Indians. It was just depressed areas with mm -hmm. you don't you don't Where you, you don't can't see, see the future. The future. Right. You right. just can't see a future. And another issue that they're not talking about is the number of our young American Indian girls who are coming up missing, like abducted or killed or both. Never find some of them. So the theory is these these young people are being captured forced into uh, sex, sex labor. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful girls. So we're seeing a lot of those kinds of issues as well. And nobody is talking about the fact that you have so many missing and then so Young many girls. murdered women. So you're pretty critical of the American government and how they handled the reservation system and... I'm critical of what happens like with the issues we've had recently with uh, taking the land away and selling it to corporate or foreign entities. Well, I, I we've got an issue that. going on in Arizona. A bill passed in the middle of the night that they actually were going to take land that was sacred land to the Apache and let a foreign company come in and mine copper on that land. And um, those types of things, when our government does that, it's really, really bad. The housing situations are terrible out there. I mean, they're really in some in some of these areas, they're just really, really bad. Mm. They don't have running water. Mm. You know, they still have to go carry water. You know, so we have those types of issues like that. Um, but I feel sorry for some groups whose water supplies have been tainted by the corporations around are corporations poisoned. Who, yeah, yeah, who are poisoning their water, and that's all they have because they don't have water systems. Right. You know. So that's what they got. So I guess what you're saying is, although the Native Americans were given some sort of independence, they were not given the means to come right. back and right. thrive like they the were resources. before. Vicky's right. uh, up. Vicky also has some uh, Cherokee ancestry. Uh -huh. Very great grandfather that went out and turned what they called the Trail of Tears. When they yeah, out and they I read about Cherokee. that. All right. Well, the reason they took the Cherokees, yet there was some gold and stuff found on their land. Oh, so, so now we have a problem. Andrew Jackson says, well, this is what you got to do here. You expect to survive, you got to go out here to Oklahoma. So they moved them out to Oklahoma. Then after that, they found something else in Oklahoma. They found oil under where oil. they moved them to Oklahoma. So now we got so to move you somewhere else. Oh, well, it, they, they, kind of most of the treatment. tribes don't have mineral light. This is something else. Oh, you mineral own the land. Lights. Do you own anything under Underneath the land? It, yeah. Yeah, so the question is like, well, how deep does my land go? <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Literally. Can I dig a basement? <laughs> yeah. Really? Is it 12 feet? Yeah. 100 feet? What? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, but you, they don't own the mineral lights. So that's another way they've been taking advantage of. Yeah, to use it lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say something. Right, right, I knew I, you were going to say. I, thought, I was expecting that let too. Me, uh, let me say this a little more diplomatic. Yeah, right, politically correct. Yes. Well, let me ask you one last question. Um, what's up with the Indian casinos? How did that come about? What are they? Like, why? Well, it's. I'm not sure exactly how it comes about, but here's the really neat thing about it. The casinos. First of all, Indians have always liked to gamble. Really? They, they gambled that was part of the before culture. the Europeans part of... came. Okay. You know, they had games where they tossed rocks in a basket and okay. you know, they did stuff like that. So that, that, that's something they, they kind of always did. Mm -hmm. they, they gamed, they played games and uh -huh. against each other and stuff like that, like lacrosse as Indians. Yeah, lacrosse like was that. a big, yeah. Okay, so 
But what happens is uh, gaming uh, becomes a way of making money. Federal Indians on federal reserves can do almost anything they want to do. In it's like sense? another country. It's like another country. Meaning that, okay. okay. The Except for can't charge taxes. And, and the government can't step in. So they're a sovereign nation. That's the term that they're using. And because of that, they can do things on their land without government intervention, which means they can have casinos. 